Hi, Josh Apple here with the Raspberry Golf Academy. Today I'm at our studio at Raspberry Falls in Leesburg, Virginia, and I'm going to talk about hip rotation. Now we've all heard about the importance of hip rotation, even the saying it's all in the hips, but maybe you don't know how to rotate your hips, when to do it, the amount you're supposed to do it. So today I'm going to focus on hip rotation, primarily in the backswing, and hopefully I'll clear up some of your questions. The beginning of your backswing is controlled by your upper body to about this point, arms, chest, and shoulders. After that point, your hips need to take over and they will dominate the rest of your backswing all the way to the top. So it would look like this. Notice I had a nice big hip rotation there. You're looking for about 40 degrees of hip rotation in your backswing. It depends on your age, skill level, flexibility, but ideally you want about 40 degrees of rotation. So again, it would look like that. And notice my backswing ended as soon as my hips were done rotating. When your hips are completed the rotation, that is the end of your backswing. So if you can only rotate that much, that's the end of your backswing. If you can rotate to there, that becomes the end of your backswing. A lot of issues people have in their backswing comes from a lack of hip rotation. They start to do funny things instead of rotating their hips. For example, if you've ever seen someone who just swings their arms, they probably get really long in their backswing. When you get loose and armsy, I'm sure we've all seen someone like that. Maybe you've seen someone who leans toward the target in their backswing. Again, another way to make up for a lack of hip rotation. Another common one might be dropping your knees and lowering to the ground, or the opposite, coming up out of your posture. These are all funny ways people get the club to the top of their backswing who struggle to rotate their hips. They're ways of getting around maybe a limitation you have in your golf swing. So how do you address that? Well, if it's a physical limitation, as in you can't turn your hips 40 degrees, that's something you need to take care of off the golf course. Stretching, uh, working on your hip flexors, uh, maybe you need to go see a doctor. But if you are physically capable of rotating your hips 40 degrees to that point, well, then it just comes down to practicing and understanding how to do it. And just being aware of that if you're leaning this way or coming up at your posture or dropping, those are things that are making up for your lack of hip rotation, that if you just simply rotate your hips, those other problems might go away. And the key is upper body, and then your hips take over. If you start your hip turn too early, as in right when you take the club away, well again, now my hip rotation is done early, and then you're gonna go into those funny things again to get the club to the top, lifting your arms, falling toward the target, so that's why it's so important to make sure you turn your hips later because as soon as your hips are done turning, that's when you need to change directions and go back the other way toward your downswing. It's also important to note that your hips start your downswing. So your hips are completing your backswing and then starting your downswing. So if you just swing your arms and then try to start your hips in the downswing, but your hips have been turned off for so long in the backswing, they're not ready to fire. So that's Another reason why it's really important to make sure you have a nice big hip rotation in your backswing so that they're ready to fire to start your downswing in your transition. I'm Josh Apple and that's your tip of the day.